Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm doing it. Hey, welcome back to Chillcraft episode 2. And if you're new here, welcome. Chillcraft is a series that I've started only a few days ago, actually, where I'm going to take the time to just slow down and play the game. And along the way, I'm going to answer any questions that are in the comments. It can be about anything. Don't have to be about me. It can be about the world. And honestly, we got a lot of questions today. I, I did not expect to have so much support on this video, the first one. As it stands now, it's Wednesday, and I think it just hit 1.4 thousand views. That's just, that's insane to me. That that's something that just happened. Yeah, I think it's a good series. Like, I think it's a good idea. I did not think it was going to do well. Like, I, I went in thinking, this is going to tank and probably kill my channel a little bit, and the opposite happened. So, thank you all for tuning in and supporting me. Anyway, let's get on with the first question I have today. Uh, we're gonna format this episode very differently from the first one. I am still just answering questions, but instead I'm going to be answering one big question and it's gonna be sandwiched by quite a few smaller questions that are a little easier to answer. Uh, question number one on my list, in the comments at least, is What do you think of Mr. Starsalt? left by Mr. Starsalt. Hey buddy, I told you on call the other day when we were just hanging out and chatting that I was going to give you the most heartfelt and honest response for what I think about you. So here it is. You are one of the few people that I have met in the past few years, at least for like my online friends, that I have kept in touch with. And that's not because, oh, it's convenient to bully you for videos or anything like that. It's a hundred percent because you are just such a nice and genuine person. And you're really fun to just hang out with. I, I know I suck at all the games that we play together, but you're still here most of the time asking if I want to play those games with you. But, but still, it means a lot that you've stuck around. And I'm glad I got you as a friend, man. All right, you can you can click off now, you specifically, because you uh, <laughs> you got what you wanted out of this, didn't you? Question number two: What's your favorite Minecraft build that I've ever made, and what was the first thing I ever built in Minecraft from Deadly Peanuts? Uh, my favorite build that I've ever done it's it's a tie between a few things that all happened around the same time. Uh, once again, it was back right during the pandemic starting. I had been playing alone on this uh, survival world. I'm pretty sure it was survival. It might have been hardcore. I don't remember. I'll see if I can find screenshots of it. I was playing on a set seed where the spawn of the world was an island with a shipwreck on it. And I started out by living inside the shipwreck, like I turned it into a little house, and then over time I built up this, like, island village. And it was one of the more, like, time-consuming worlds that I've ever played on. But it was also just super fun. And I think that's what really got me, is because, like, every time I'd build something, I wasn't building it to be like, this is going to be perfect, or this is going to be functional. I was like, this is going to look cool. Basically, after I had beaten the game, because I beat the game pretty early on, I was effectively just trying to find things to do. So I started building all these mob farms, and the mob farms themselves, I always think, are pretty ugly, but coincidentally make for very good structure for building giant versions of the mobs that you're farming. So what I ended up doing is uh, I built this giant creeper. This was the first one. Uh, it went through a lot of iterations on the face because I wanted it to look good. But I built this big, big old cartoony creeper. And the second one I built was this, uh, I built an iron farm. And if you don't know, iron farms kind of look like this when they're just sitting up in the sky. So I built this giant iron golem 
around it. It's It was covered in glass by the end because golems kept spawning on top of it and it was annoying. But yeah, that's that's the, that's the first. Also, around the same time, this is on the first server I played on, what got me my start on YouTube. I had built myself this like mountain base. Like I dug out into a mountain and bored a bunch of holes through it and did all this stuff. Uh, and you see it briefly in the first video before it's blown up. But it was just, it was really fun because that server, like, it was a time capsule of a base for me. I was just playing around with a bunch of friends that I had made and they would, we'd prank each other all the time. Things would like just appear at my base and I'd be like, no, I'm leaving it. It's history. And like in the base itself, I had so many pranks happen and I did a lot of cool stuff like... I just thought it'd be fun to build these like redstone contraptions on the side of my base uh, which were just moving eyes so like the mountain was looking at you and they'd move from side to side the little pupil would move and I don't know I just I thought it was really cool uh, and I've done a bunch of other builds that are probably like technically better but those are just my two favorites uh, as for my first build uh, I remember this vividly actually, which is unfortunate that I know exactly what to say for this question. My first build ever, it was day one of playing Minecraft Survival. I don't even think I had played the game at that point. I had just gotten it using my little Minecraft $25 gift card. Uh, I spawned in I was on like a jungle beach, uh, and on the beach I dug into like a little hill and I made that my home. It was completely dark inside. I don't even remember if I had a door, because this was like really when I had no idea what I'm doing. Uh, and you said to exclude houses, so the thing that I built first, other than that little like hole in the wall, was <laughs> a fishing dock, which... For the people that are friends with me and know me, uh, fishing in games is like my go-to. I have a whole video on this channel that is dedicated just to Minecraft fishing. And I gotta say, it was just so funny that even as a child I was like, it's my calling. I'm going to fish. And then I did, and then I fished. Uh, let's see what our next question is. Uh, what is a movie you believe to be highly underrated that isn't Speed Racer? From Studio Mania. Uh, this is from someone that I know, personally. A uh, good friend of mine. Which is why they mentioned the whole Speed Racer thing. Uh, one, Speed Racer is extremely underrated, and I, I hate you for preventing me from telling people that. Uh, go watch it, the live-action Speed Racer movie. It's a it's a hidden gem. It's a lot better than people think it is. Thank you for coming to the TED Talk. Now, for moving on to non-Speed Racer. I thought about this a little bit before I started recording, so I'd have something to say. The Tron Legacy movie, the uh, the Disney Tron movie that they made, where it, it all the, uh, the effects were upgraded and it was stuff. Uh, people really didn't like that movie, but... I want to say as a kid, I watched it at least like 50 times as a child because this was back when you would rent DVDs from Netflix and we had rented it and so I just kept watching it over and over again. And I think honestly that movie itself is actually really good. It's not the best obviously, definitely not the best movie, but it's a really good movie in its own right. Like, the music is good, the effects are really good. For what it is, it is a really good movie. And I will die on this hill. I actually ended up watching that movie so much that I'm like, I need to take it to the next step. I need Tron. And so I got the, I think it was the Tron Legacy video game. Which, I'll see if I can find it. I got it on the Wii. We would rent it from the library back when they used to rent games. Uh, and then eventually I, I just bought it. Uh, so I have it still. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll put in some footage, like, over top of the, of Chillcraft and be like, this is what the game looked like. Editing me in the future, remember, this is, this is what the game looks like. What are your hobbies outside of gaming? From Alex Bickle 4553 Well, if you don't know, uh, I am an animation major. I'm majoring in animation. I'm in my 
junior year of college right now. Which is more terrifying than it should be. And I guess while it technically would count as more of like a job, I, I love doing art and animation. And that's really just my biggest passion is doing that. It's just so much fun to be able to take an idea and like a character or even just a story and just make it happen. Because honestly, art is such a freeing thing. It's a freeing ability to be able to create something. And the idea that I can just sit down and just start drawing and something will happen to me is one of the greatest feelings in the world because sure I go through art block I go through all the struggles of being an artist and doing that uh, but it's just it's cool to me because you look at all that stuff when you're a kid and you're just like wow this this is something completely different like this is like as soon as I think it hits you that it's all made by people like and it's not just like random moving pictures like this was made by someone with a vision and an idea for what it needed to be and you're like wow and then you understand oh my gosh i can do that too like this is something that i can accomplish i think that moment for me was just like wow it was so eye-opening to be able to just understand that creating things it is difficult but it is possible. So yeah, I guess animation is probably my biggest hobby. Though I, I guess it's not a hobby because it's gonna be a job. But you know, they might say don't make your hobby your job. But hey, if this whole YouTube video making thing works out really well and I start making money and it supports me, my hobby will have become a job here as well. So. It really is just what it is. The next question I have is from Lucky Coin Flip 6203. Whatever happened to Big Crafting? Boy, that is that is quite the story, actually. For the uninitiated about this channel, many months ago, probably closer to a year ago, maybe over a year ago now, I released a video called Big Crafting Trailer in which it's a bunch of flyover shots with some shaders on of these giant crafting tables. These were built on the SM Premiere server that I used to play on and I, I had planned a whole thing for it, an entire bit. Uh, then the first season ended and we switched to a new world and I was like, okay, I guess I'll start building them on the new world and figure it out from there. Somewhere along the line, I got really busy, so I couldn't really continue to make big crafting into a reality. So instead, I, I shelved it for a time. I was like, I can just wait. It doesn't need to come out now. I'll put it on hiatus. Uh, and then a few months after that, uh, a friend of mine, Bursty, made this video where she, in order to counteract my big crafting obsession, started building giant furnaces everywhere, uh, which unfortunately was not the point. Like, my point was never to annoy people, even though it eventually did, and so I continued to do it anyway, because you know me. But at that point, I became somewhat disinterested in the idea. Uh, so, Big Crafting will probably never see the light of day, the original idea. I could tell you about it if you're interested in it, what it was supposed to be. I'd have to pull up the documents again and figure everything out in order, because I wrote it over the course of, like, a couple weeks, and I was, I'd write it a lot when I was sleep-deprived. It was very very good way of doing things but uh <laughs> yeah big crafting probably never gonna happen i'll still build the crafting tables because i think they're hilarious and what's the point if i'm not making myself laugh so sorry to everyone i have disappointed with the fact that big crafting will probably never exist at least in a long form format but what can you do?
Our next question is, if you had to start YouTube over again from the very beginning, what would you do differently from Frank Desson? That is a really good question. And I've thought about that a lot. If I had done everything differently, what would that have looked like? I wish I would have started doing it sooner. I wish I would have started making videos specifically on the first server I played on earlier than I did initially. I look back at why I started doing YouTube sometimes and I'm, I realize my main inspiration for like starting stuff and playing on servers wasn't to like be the modern idea of the Minecraft YouTuber. I wanted to do like Hermitcraft type stuff, which is honestly closer to what I'm doing now in this series. But I just, I regret not starting as soon as I had started playing on that server, because I don't have the world anymore, and the only documentation I had of that first world, which is my favorite world I think I've ever played on, is... I think an 8 minute video of me blowing up different parts of the server uh, and a couple hundred screenshots of me and my friends and I just, I miss it. It was one of my favorite things that I'd ever worked on and I, I wish there were more documentation of it and I wish I had gone down the route of this, at least what I'm doing right now, a little earlier. Not because I think it would have made me grow faster or do any better or be better than what I'm usually doing. I just feel like this is a lot more me when I'm doing stuff alone. And like, sure, I make jokes all the time. I do all sorts of different things all the time. I'm a big joker. I love goofing off with my friends, hanging out with them. I just, I look back and realize why I started and wonder what it would have been like if I had continued in the same vein that I had wanted to start in. You can even see it a little bit. Uh, I think it was season two of Sector 17, where I was being like the, the start of a new world video, I think it was. And it's just, it's interesting to look at for me. I don't know. Yeah, I think I, I think I would have just wanted to have started sooner. I don't think any of the videos on my channel are bad. Uh, if I did, I would have removed them, but I am I kind of refuse to remove any video that I've made. I'm saying this real stupid because it's so early in the morning. I'm actually recording this instead of after my class. Why did I make a pickaxe? Instead of after my class, I'm recording this before I go to class because I'm not going to have time this afternoon because I got to finish an art assignment. So I figured I'd do it now when I'd normally just be waiting for my class to start. I got a self-portrait project that I'm... I'm working on. No, you can't see it, because that's a face reveal. God, wouldn't it be funny if I face revealed randomly in a video? That would be funny. Maybe one day. Maybe the end of Chillcraft. Get me to uh, a thousand subscribers by the end of Chillcraft and <laughs> face reveal. <laughs> I'm only joking. That'd be funny, though, if it worked. Oh, I got another one from Mr. Starsalt. What do you think of that Ethan839 guy? Thank you, Star, for bringing up the judge my friends questions. Ethan is also a really good friend of mine. I actually was friends with him before I knew you, Star. Kinda. Uh, we... You can see it in the video, actually, the, uh... I think the SM Premiere is a server video, that's what it's called. Where we end up just hanging out at my base for a while, uh, we go into the deep dark, we do a whole bunch of stuff together. Uh, so yeah, Ethan's a really great guy. I love the stuff that he makes on YouTube. He's super fun to hang out with as well. I have the most fun when I'm hanging out with both of you at the same time, I'd say, because those, those late nights when we're just hanging out, doing who even knows what kind of shenanigans, we're just playing around, goofing off, not even like having a goal. You guys are some of the few people where when I'm making videos, like of my YouTube friends, when I make videos with you and I just hang out with you normally, it always feels like we're just hanging out having a good time. It's never like, it never feels like I have to put on 
a different face or put on a different persona when I hang out with you guys. It's always just, this is me, I get to be myself. And it's super fun and funny the whole time. Uh, now to the big question. The biggest question, because it is the most thought-filled question, and also coincidentally the title of <laughs> episode two, which is, what is the meaning of life? Uh, I got this on my Discord server from uh, this user, Celeste, and I also got it on YouTube from, is it Powell? Pavel? Pavel? Uh... 3936, which has to be the funniest coincidence recently. I am currently enrolled in a philosophy course in my college right now, right? Uh, it happens. Now, normally, that wouldn't mean anything, right? It's philosophy. You talk about anything in philosophy. It just so happens that in the philosophy course I am taking, the title of the course is The Meaning of Life. And that's all we've been talking about. And it's honestly super interesting. Like, usually I'm of the vein where it's just philosophers just stay yapping. And yeah, I get it rich from the guy that made a series where all he does is talk and play Minecraft. But it's so weird that that question not only was asked in that way, but was asked twice. And I get it. It's kind of like a basic bare bones what do you think about this thing but i mean come on man that's it's kind of kind of weird of a coincidence that it's happening like this anyway in in our class we've been talking a lot about how you cannot from a human perspective understand fully what it means to like be a human and be alive right like, the only reason we're able to understand the human body so well, and we don't even understand it fully, is just because we can look at it from an outside perspective. And I think that's been one of the most enlightening and honestly difficult things to wrap my head around, where you can't understand anything unless you can look at it from outside of itself. So, like, we can't understand fully what the point of the universe is because we can't get outside of our universe. Which is just, it's so wild and you're thinking so much larger than you normally would have to. And I guess my, my brain just, oh, that's not good. My brain just has a hard time comprehending stuff like that where I'm just like, why, why do I need to be thinking about this stuff right now, you know? I don't know how, how to answer a question like this because I really do subscribe to the fact that I cannot fathom what the point of like living a full human life is because I haven't lived enough of my life, I think. Like, it's such a big question for me, because I look at it and I'm like, yeah, like, I love being alive, like, I love my friends, I love my family. I have a really good life, and I just, I don't, I do not know what all of it could mean. And I honestly, at least in terms of philosophy, I do think that could point us in the right direction for what the meaning of life could be, is being able to exist in a way where we are allowed to question it. Because like, sure, you can say the meaning of life is to live good and to treat others well, and like, I could say all that and portray myself as this huge philosophy guy, like philosophical big guy, but I just, I don't know. And I think not knowing is part of what makes life good, what makes life beautiful. Because if you knew everything that was going to happen and you knew what the point doing anything was, why would you want to do it? Like, you already know what the outcome is, so you're not going to do, like, you're not going to take risks, you're not going to do anything dangerous. You're only going to live your life in a way that gives you the most benefit. And that can be fine, a lot of people do. I fully respect it. But what is the purpose of doing something like that. I think when you get down to it, life only means as much as you're willing to let it, which is why there are so many different schools of thought and so many different philosophical ideas. When you get down to it, it's not about 
Like, philosophy itself and, like, thinking about the meaning of life isn't about subscribing to what someone else thinks. It's about learning what you can from others and then figuring out what it means to you. I don't know. I feel like I'm going in circles and I probably don't make any sense right now, realistically. But let's have a discussion down in the comments. I am one that does like to think about stuff like this, but... I just don't think I have the answers that a lot of people are looking for. Which is unfortunate, because I'd love to like fully answer this question and be able to give a definitive answer, but I really don't think that's the point, you know? Here, I, I, I figured it out, I, I can put it simply. The meaning of life is to discover it for yourself. I know it's kind of a cop-out, kind of probably annoying to a lot of people, but it's true. I cannot tell you what it means to live your life, because I don't live your life. I will never be living your life, and I can empathize and probably try to understand the life that you're living, but I will never be you, I will never have your brain, I will never understand what it means to be a person other than who I am already. And sure, I'll grow and change over time, and that is just how life works, but I'm already an adult, I am already just like a full grown man at this point, and it's just, it's, it's a little scary to think about, but I don't know man. I think it just, it means as much as it means to you personally, and no one is allowed to tell you otherwise, because it's your life, so. Go out there and live it, man. I'm sorry, I feel like I've just- I've gone in circles, gotten nowhere, and then just said good luck. <laughs> tough questions though, tough questions. I appreciate. Uh, the next question we got is, what would you add or delete from Minecraft from Xerox5173? I am an old Minecraft enjoyer, you could say. Um, I'm old, right? I like- I started playing, I think, in 1.6.4. So a little bit before 1.7. And that time of playing Minecraft, sure I'm nostalgic for it, but I think that was some of the more fun times I had playing. I don't have too many big issues with anything that is currently in the game. Like sure, phantoms are annoying, but like I feel like to a certain extent, as unfortunate as it is, uh, they're valid. They're allowed to exist, like, I wouldn't remove them just because I get annoyed by them. And frankly, the people that get annoyed by them are the people that aren't afraid of nighttime to begin with in Minecraft. I'd be sleeping as soon as it turns night in Minecraft, so... Uh, in terms of adding stuff, I think... I don't know if they're going to do it, but if they're going to build this giant warden-shaped portal in an ancient city, I feel like they should probably make something out of it because now it has been there for a very long time and I have this feeling that people are starting not to care about it. I think it'd be cool to add more lore base stuff into the game but I just, I like the whole, cause Minecraft really is just like what you make of it, it's a sandbox game. And so I can always be like, ah, I want more blocks, I want more this and that, I want more dimensions, I want more adventuring stuff. Uh, I want more things in the world that make you have to question what happened to the world. Like, being able to ask questions and put it together on your own, to me, is what makes a lot of games fun. Like, a lot of the, uh, the soft world building stuff they have in Red Dead Redemption 2, where you're just, you're walking around, and you just find like an entire scene that played out without you being there and you just get to see it and be like wow i have to now piece together like if i'm interested i have to figure out what happened here i made of all things a reddit post one time where i was talking about minecraft combat and i was like i don't want it to change from what that because this was uh, long after they had changed it to new PvP. But I was like, I don't want it to change from what it is now. I think they're going in a good direction. What I want is for them to do more with it. You should be able to, like, time your, like, letting go of your shield or something, or, like, hitting your shield at the right time before a mob hits you. And if you do that, it'll, like, push them back. Right? 
and it'll, like, it'll send them away instead of letting them like continuously hit your shield and I was I was just like I think it'd be cool to do stuff like that or like add enchantments specifically for the shield because the shield has unbreaking and mending I think uh, and I also think making things more difficult could be nice just because Minecraft even at the stage that I'm at now I have a shield so as long as I stay aware I am effectively never going to die but I don't know it's interesting stuff to think about but I just I don't have a definitive uh, we got yo what's your favorite color and why I need a thorough breakdown from Calentro 324 that's a good question uh, my girlfriend has grilled me on this before because she really wanted to know my favorite color. Uh, and the answer I came up with was, I, I had to think about it a lot because I was like, man, a favorite color because I use colors all the time. I, I have to. Uh, you'd think it'd be the little pink that my, uh, my hoodie is on my character as well as on me in real life when I wear the hoodie. It's not. So I'll try to find a picture and point it out. It'll be really difficult. You barely ever see it, even if you notice it. It's during a sunset, there is like this weird, like purple orange mix of color, right? From where it's the night sky versus the sunset. And there's like a very th like fine point where my favorite color is. I could not tell you what it's supposed to be. It's like a purpley, orangey swirl. <laughs> like I like my colors to be Neapolitan. Yeah, I don't I don't know how much more of a thorough breakdown I can give than that, because I'd actually have to know what I'm talking about. What's your dream video game from Fuzzy Leo? Hello Leo. I've thought about this before and I do have an answer. It's just that it's unfortunately something that could never happen ever, probably. Like, it just will not happen. And that is a game that is just 100% the entirety of the uh, Ghibli or Ghibli, however you want to say it. All of those movies just in a, in a game format. And the reason it won't happen is because Hayao Miyazaki has said that he would never let any of his stories be turned into a video game. Which is fine. I respect it. I'm just bummed out because now I can't fly around in the post-apocalyptic world of Nausicaa. If not that, I would want something along a, a similar vein to like the first Portal game but solely built around like speedrunning and speedrunning mechanics. My favorite thing in games is to go fast like and launch myself around like rocket jumping dude. That thing is that just it's so cool. And learning how to do it is so difficult, but god, it's so cool. So yeah, I think I just want like some crazy new movement shooter that is built as like a speedrunning game just so I can like be fast and feel cool. Uh, this is from a much longer comment. The main question here is, what are your goals with this channel and what do you hope to do on it? From Raskazak3313. Sorry if I butchered your name there. That's That's got a lot of letters in it that I know what sounds they're supposed to make and I don't know if I said them right, but um, I'm sorry if I didn't. My goals for this channel, what I hope to do on it. That is a very, very good question. See, I started out doing YouTube, as I said in the last video, solely out of convenience, boredom, and ability. I was just, I was able to, I'm pretty sure I made the YouTube channel only a few days before I uploaded the first video. Like, it was 100% on a whim that any of it happened. And at this point, I really just, I treat it as a hobby. I like the numbers going up, you know, the whole dopamine boost, it's nice. But that's really not the point, right? Like, I want, of course, to to do well on YouTube. I'd like to grow and form a community. I think it's really cool that other people are able to do that. It would be nice for this to become anything more than it already is to me. In terms of Chillcraft stuff, I'm 
just I just wanted to sit down and talk because you don't you don't get a lot of that on YouTube. So I guess in in terms of what I want to do on this channel, I want to be that person that was able to come in and do his own thing and not really need to conform to what anyone else is doing and just be able to make whatever and still find success from it. Because I think, looking at it objectively, I've only got about a year from now, less than a year actually, before I'll probably need to drop this entirely. So unless it does like super well out of nowhere in the next year, or I guess in the next like 10 months, unless it starts doing super well, I'm just not gonna be able to do it long term. Like it would have to start providing for me in a way that it just reasonably probably would not. Uh, and I'm totally okay with that. This is just for fun and a hobby. I like editing, I like making things. I think it's cool that people are enjoying the things that I make. Like, that part I really enjoy, and especially on Chillcraft, it's been so nice to see everyone just supporting it and being like, wow, I'm so glad someone's making this kind of content. No one, like, a lot of people are just being so loud and trying to be the next big thing, and you're out here just trying to do your own thing and find success in that. I just, I wish that I didn't know of the time frame I have, but realistically, I just, I do. Like, the, the time frame in which this channel will continue to exist is pretty short, all things considered. And I wish I made more videos, honestly, because back during the pandemic, I made maybe, like, one or two... I think I made maybe three in the first month that I did YouTube stuff, and then I stopped for a little bit and then came back and made, like, four more, and then it's like... I had all these huge breaks where I could have been making stuff, I could have been doing stuff and recording it and making it, and I just... I didn't. Uh, my growth has been really slow on YouTube. Uh, that's totally fine. Never compare yourself to other people in terms of growth. Like, you're not always gonna blow up out of nowhere. The people that have just blown up from nothing are some of the luckiest people in the world, because now they get to do this thing that 100% was just a hobby and make it into a reality like their dream is now a reality and you know i just i don't know i'm rambling again <laughs> i i find that this series is just listen to minecraft man yap for 25 minutes or however long this video turns out to be and I hope he says something interesting along the way. I guess that's that's basically it. I'm feeling like this is a good stopping point. I know I didn't get to all the questions today, but uh, I'll hopefully be able to bring some of them in for episode 3. Make sure to leave your comments down below this video now and I'll answer those questions, leave any questions you got. You can even join the Discord server, it'll also be linked below and to the first video. Uh, if you're looking for the first video in the series, it's on a playlist in my channel titled Chillcraft. This will be there too. I try to record these on Wednesdays uh, and they go up Sunday at 2 in the morning because <laughs> I think that's a swell time for things to go up. Uh, it gives YouTube some time to process what the video is. So yeah, if if you're interested, you, you should leave a comment. I'll try to answer as many as I can each time. And we did make good progress. We're, we're in iron. I've only been recording for like an hour. I even got more iron. So that's nice. Uh, and again, just a huge thank you to everyone that had left a comment and everyone that watched 1.4 thousand views is a lot this video itself I think has gotten me the most subscribers that I've ever gotten from a single video the the first Chillcraft episode uh, and I'm really excited to build up a community and see where this goes because I think episode 3 We'll be doing more mining, hopefully get ourselves to diamond and then go to the nether. But yeah, that's about it. I wonder how many how many times we'll be able to do this, because I play for about an hour each time, answer as many questions as I can, and then edit it down for Sunday. Anyway, this has been Chillcraft. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, like and subscribe. It means a lot.
the dopamine I get from those numbers going up is really nice, so thank you. I will once again see you in the next one.